In this video, we're going to revisit the sampling distribution for one mean, but we're going to formalize it a little bit with some new notation. There's a tiny URL for the applet we're going to use today. It's tinyurl.com slash 3000-1 mean, since we're dealing with quantitative data now. So what comes up right away is a distribution of sleep times, and you can see it's got the mean and the standard deviation given there, um, and this is a large population. So we're going to think about sampling from this population of people who on average get the recommended amount of sleep every night, right? It's centered at eight. And think about what it would look like if we take samples of size 30 from that. So starting with the population, we have numbers that describe the population. Those numbers are called parameters. So you can sort of remember population and parameter both start with P. So parameters are just numbers that describe the population. So we have two here. We have the population mean, and I'm going to use a new symbol for the population mean. I'm going to use mu for that. So the population mean here is 8.001 hours. And then we also have the population standard deviation. And the symbol that we're going to use for that is a lowercase sigma. So the population standard deviation is 1.510. Now using the applet, we're going to take some samples. So I'm going to do a sample size of 30 and draw samples. So you can see the blue dots here on the population are showing um, which people from the population got sampled. And then this most recent sample is showing for all of those 30 people what their sleep times were. And then 7.942, that's the average sleep time for that particular sample. And that sample average is getting put over here in the third plot. And of course, every sample of size 30 that you take has slightly different values, right? Because it has different individuals that get selected, and so you get a different sample mean and standard deviation each time. So this middle picture here is showing one possible sample that you could get from this population, and we have the mean and the standard deviation of that sample. So numbers that describe the sample are called statistics. Again, conveniently, they both start with S. Statistics are numbers that describe the sample. And we have the sample mean. I'm going to introduce a new symbol for that. I'm going to use Y bar for the mean. So the sample mean Y bar is 8.258. And then we also have the sample standard deviation, so the spread of the sample. And the symbol that we're going to use for that is S. And that is 1.404. And this third picture over here, this is showing sample means from all the different samples that we could get. So like right now, I've done 10 samples from this population. All of them had slightly different sample means, and we're plotting those there. If we want to see all the different sample means that we can get or estimate that distribution, um, I'm going to do a much bigger number of samples. Um, so let's get up to 1,000. Sometimes it does kind of take too long if you try to do 10,000 here. So this distribution that we've simulated is called the sampling distribution. So I'm going to label this. This is the sampling distribution. And I know the word sounds very similar to sample, um, but conceptually it's very different. So what makes the sampling distribution different is that if you think of this as being a distribution made of dots, these are not individual people and their sleep times. These are all sample means. So we use Y bar for sample means. So you can think of this as the distribution of all the different sample means that you could get. And specifically, since we were um, sampling from a population with mean 8, this is showing us the sample means that would occur under that assumption. So that would occur if the population mean, so I'm writing that as mu, if the population mean were actually 8. And you can see that the mean of the sampling distribution is about the same of, as the mean of the population. That makes sense because sometimes your sample means are too high and sometimes they're too low, but they average out in the right place. But the spread of the sampling distribution is much smaller than the spread of the population. And we've talked about this before. The reason for that is that sample means are much less variable than individuals, right? You might have individuals that have really high or really low sleep times, but when you take a sample of size 30 and average them, it starts to balance out. So the spread of the sampling distribution is much smaller, and that value, the spread of the sampling distribution, is called the standard error. So this number here, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, 
we call that the standard error. So up until now, we've just said that the standard error is less than the population standard deviation, but they actually have a very specific relationship. So if you want to calculate the standard error of y bar, that's what this notation means, you take the population standard deviation, which is sigma, and you divide by the square root of n. So in this case, we would take 1.510, which is the standard deviation of the population, divide by the square root of the sample size, which was 30, and we get 0.276. So notice that's the same number that we get from the simulation. In practice, you may not know what the population standard deviation is. Um, in general, we only have the sample, we don't have the population. So at times you may need to estimate this value as just s over the square root of n. So there I'm substituting in the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation. In the next activity, you're going to be reviewing the logic of inference. So this is a process that you've been through a lot for categorical data, but you're going to rethink it for quantitative data now. Um, and I actually am missing the question. I'll have to put that back on the page. Um, but the question is, do college students get less sleep than recommended? And we're going to think about different samples and how much evidence they provide. So if we were going to state our hypotheses here, we want to do it in terms of mu. Because remember, hypotheses are always statements about the parameter, in this case, the population mean. And if we're thinking about pe whether people get less sleep than recommended, the recommended amount of sleep is eight hours. So remember, the null always has an equal sign in it. And if we're trying to prove that students get less than the recommended amount of sleep, that would be the alternative. So I'm going to stop there and let you fill out the rest of the page after working through a Google form.